What is up guys, it's Bruin Steel here and welcome back to another WWE broadcast. I'm your host Bruin Steel and I am joined by Canadian Yorker. Um this man's been busy, but he's back. Welcome back. Welcome. Good to be back. How's everything? How's, how's everything going? Good, good. I'm sure the viewers have missed this man. I've been doing the last couple of broadcasts by myself, but this man's been busy. Um it was New Year's and Christmas a little bit of that, so um, we're finally back together. So today we're talking about the Monday Night Raw that took place January 8th, 2024. And it took place in Portland, Oregon. Um, and it's the build up to the upcoming Royal Rumble event. And I can't wait to see who's the winner of those, um, the men's and the men, uh, women's Royal Rumble. So um, I can't wait to uh, do my prediction video for that. So um, stay tuned, guys. So um, basically... Um, it was a great um, show. Um, um, the stream that I was trying to see the uh, watch the show on was horrible. But um, basically, um, Drew McIntyre opened up the show and he talked about his loss against um, Seth Rollins at day one, saying that oh, um, he he was the re he might be the reason why he lost the match. How uh, Seth Rollins' leg was on the rope and then he almost had the um, one, two, three, and then saying that, oh, maybe Seth Rollins and Sami Zayn was right. Um, the one that he was the one that's holding himself down. And there was a time that saying that Drew McIntyre actually was probably planning on leaving WWE. And I'm like, oh my God, I love Drew McIntyre, don't leave. And basically, he gets interrupted by CM Punk, obviously. And wow, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre, I haven't seen those guys since the cutting edge society days like um cm punk ran this group called the edge uh the cutting edge society um which drew mcintyre was actually one of the members so um so cm punk and drew mcintyre had a little bit of a um you know uh promo and drew mcintyre said um, he's going to join the Royal Rumble. So that's a good sign that he's not going to leave WWE. Drew McIntyre declared himself in the Royal Rumble. And basically he said that um, CM Punk used to be the leader, but saying that, basically saying that Drew McIntyre is, he's basically CM Punk's daddy, saying that he's not a leader now. And basically, um, Drew McIntyre said that he's going to be the one to throw over um, CM Punk from the Royal Rumble. And... Basically, CM Punk said that he's going to do the same, but he's going to be the one to do it last Drew McIntyre. So, um, what are your thoughts on the Drew McIntyre and CM Punk um, confrontation? First of all, it's very sad to hear that, that Drew McIntyre lost his, his match rematch. Seth Rollins, Drew McIntyre, I'm really sorry that that happened to you. I'm really disappointed that that happened to you. Um, I didn't really expect it better. I thought you were this was you were on a total rampage. You're gonna take down everybody out of your way. You're gonna tear that world heavyweight championship away from Seth Rollins. But alas, it did not happen. Um, second thing, uh, CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. This is a really good feud coming. Um, you know, this is good for CM Punk to get himself back in the. Reigns, um, um, everything in the WWE. And, um, you know, Drew McIntyre, he's just, he, he's on a tear right now. He's, he's, this man has obviously gone through so much. You know, ever since he lost the championship with Bloodline, you know, he see, you see his career going on the down, on a downward trend. You know, he's not really going anywhere. Um, but now he's aligned himself with the Judgment Day, um, and he's doing this thing in the, with the Judgment Day, but he's not really a part of the Judgment Day. He's an honorary member of the Judgment Day. So, you know, I I don't know where he's going. It just feels like he's lost for the most part. He's lost. He wants to join the Royal Rumble, so, but um, how how where can he take his career now? Um, I think it'd be very interesting to see where it goes. All right, and uh, you guys got to understand, um, yeah, people, you guys been boo uh, Drew McIntyre is a heel, people boo him, but he had his reasons to screw Jey Uso. Um, obviously, the pressure was Drew, and 
Drew, you know, he has a point. He delivered a unbelievable emotional package um, one of before one of the roles before a couple months ago, explaining that he never actually won a title in front of the crowd. Like he won a WWE champion at WrestleMania. Um, um, it was, I believe, it was thirty one. I don't even remember, but it was against Brock Lesnar. Uh, it was in two thousand twenty during the um, um, the pandemic. Um, he beat Brock Lesnar to win the WWE Championship, and that's because it wasn't in front of a um, live audience. And ever since then, he wants to win in front of an audience. So that's just that. And he failed a couple of times because of the bloodline in Jey Uso. So him turning heel and joining Judgment Day is understandable. Um, if you turn on Drew McIntyre, that's on you. Like he explained it's why he did it and he's every right to turn heel because he wants revenge for on Jay. But Jay Uso claimed that he changed and I agree, but Drew McIntyre just wants to go out for redemption. Um, I think he's done with Jay Uso. I think he made his point. He already beaten Jay Uso t twice. Um, in an advantage match for war games and then another one. So like what else do you want to prove? You can beat Jey Uso. Thank God you got your revenge um, So we have to see what happens with uh, Drew McIntyre um, But I'm not gonna talk too much um, moving on um, The first match of the evening is Finn Balor one half of the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions going one-on-one -on -one. Um, with Tomso Simpa, one half of the air Y. Um, surprisingly, this is actually a match that was um, <laughs> was uh, announced by R Truth. So R Truth trying to be part of the Judgment Day announced his match to um, <laughs> Adam Pierce and um, basically called Finn Balor Scaredy Cat. And then Finn Balor said, "Yeah, give me the match." So basically, that's just that. And in an incredible upset, Tomso Simpa with the assist of Johnny Gargano. Gets the win. Um, yeah, you heard it. Finn Balor gets Finn Balor losses. Uh, loses the match. Um, because of the interference by Johnny Gargano. Um, Tom Sosa Senpai was able to sneak a flash pin. So it's like a sneak um pin um that you can do, and it's really sneaky. And Finn Balor just couldn't believe it. And there you have it. Tom Sosa Senpai defeats Finn Balor, and this is a um you know this is a path for DIY. DIY claimed that they're the next. Contenders to Finn Balor and um, um, Damon Priest, and I love to see that. That's gonna be a great match, DIY versus Judgment Day. But that's just a test if um, DIY was uh, capable of um, keeping up with um, Judgment Day, and it seems that's the case. Like Finn Balor actually lost, um, to my surprise. So, what are your thoughts on this match between um, Finn Balor and Tom So Simpa? I find it very surprising that they would sneak a win against the Judgment Day. Um, after after them constantly going after Imperium and facing Imperium, and you know, I think they probably picked up on what Imperium does, and they use those dirty tactics. So, <laughs> so these guys are, you know, these guys are very innovative and smart wrestlers. Um, so they know how to win, and. Uh, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how they interact with the Judgment Day. Um, you know, Judgment Day has definitely got uh, one thing after another. They've got more challengers coming, so they definitely have to be more prepared for that. All right, yes, indeed. The next match is Kofi Kingston going one-on-one -on -one with Ludwig Kaiser. You saw what happened last week. Jey Uso teamed up with Kofi Kingston. Who, have, who would have thought that those two were going to team each other? Obviously, they were part of a tag team that had the greatest rivalry in tag team history. The New Day and the Usos. Um, Jay Uso and Kofi Kingston tagged against um, Imperialism last week. But we saw what happened with Gianti Vinci who had that injury. So the um, match had to be stopped. So I guess this is the rematch of Kofi Kingston and Lofi Kaiser. I kind of want to see Jey Uso in action, but I feel like Jey Uso already faced Lofi Kaiser. Unless he, yeah, I think Jey Uso already faced him, so they put Kofi Kingston in the match. So Kofi Kingston going one on one with Lofi Kaiser. Um, I only saw. I actually thought we were gonna have a winner for this one, but um, Lofi Kaiser is obviously the, the heel with the Imperism. Imperism is just a heel, um, obviously. And obviously there is a rivalry between these two groups, um, New Day and um, I feel like New Day and um, Imperism, I think they already 
did um feud, but I'm not sure. But obviously there's hatreds between Ludwig Kaiser and Kofi Kingston, probably because Kofi Kingston did that ridiculous Santa Santa Claus costume give in front of him in backstage, which was absolutely hilarious. But um, yeah, um, the match went to a double count off, so they just hate each other. Um, I guess that's okay. They hate each other. They stare. They tear apart each other. Uh, but Ludwig Kaiser gets the edge, throws the chair in Kofi Kingston's face and knocks him out. And then basically um, he starts choking Kofi on the steps. Um, referees try to um, take him out. But Ludwig Kaiser um, sneaks attacks him, running drop kick, puts um, Kingston's head into the steel steps. Like, ooh, that gotta hurt. Um, I haven't heard any addition of what the condition of Kofi Kingston is. Hopefully it's not like a serious injury. Probably be out for a couple weeks, but... Um, all I can say is Kofi Kingston is going to go out for revenge after he recovers. So, what are your thoughts on this um, uh, Kofi Kingston and Ludwig Kaiser match? Yeah, there's, there's definitely bad blood between both of these guys, both of these factions. Um, they don't like each other. And, um, I mean, Ludwig Kaiser definitely has a reason to, be, to, do, to do it against Kofi, to take him out. Because he did, he did injure... Uh, Giovanni, so you know this. I mean, Kofi Kofi needs to watch his back um, because you know Kaiser is, is smart, uh, but he, he needs to watch his back, and we're gonna see the we're gonna see a good feud between these two guys. All right, so moving on is the segment we got. Your girl, Nia Jax, just kidding, sorry. <laughs> you got um, our girl, Nia Jax. Yes, I said our girl as a joke, don't worry. Um, we got Nia Jax in the ring getting interviewed, and oh my god, she was getting booed. Yes, I know you like that. She was getting booed. <laughs> um, so, um, basically, she wants to... She has this obsession of breaking Becky Lynch's face. Like, oh my god, this, like... She needs to back off of uh, um, Becky Lynch. And um, she basically threatened to break Michael Cole's face. Um, <laughs> um, but um, yeah, he said um, she said that she's going to win the Royal Rumble. And she, there's no man or woman. So obviously I think she just wants to tear a man or a woman's face or something. I don't know. Um, we actually saw Nia Jax enter a men's Royal Rumble. Um, it took an arm, army to take her down. That was ridiculous. Um, but she said a man or woman. So hopefully she gets involved in like intergender matches. I like to see that. Um, but um, oof. And she gets interrupted by Rhea Ripley. And all I can say is this is the first time I've ever heard a heel get cheered on so loud. And I know you're going to agree with me. People are going to agree me saying this, the only reason why Rhea Ripley was being cheered because obviously everyone doesn't want to listen to Nia Jax talk and talk and talk. So um, that's the huge pop that I've ever heard of to a heel. So once Rhea Ripley's theme song showed up, everyone was like cheering her like she was a face. So, and that's just the thing. I, I just feel like Rhea Ripley can be a baby face, but it's kind of difficult because She's in, like, you know, she's in damage control, so, um, not damage control, sorry, she's in Judgment Day. So, um, obviously Rhea Ripley said once she went through Royal Wumble, would take her name out of her mouth, but Nia Jax saying that if she wins, she's gonna ch challenge Rhea Ripley at WrestleMania, so, we have to see what happens, so, so, what are your thoughts on this? All right, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how uh, Nia Jax is going to deal with the 29 other women that she's facing off in the um, in the Royal Rumble. You know, Nia Jax has to face Bailey and the, and the uh, uh, you know and, and 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 you know Bailey and those girls. So you know that's going to be a tough one. Because she does have some pretty intense opposition. Um, Nia Jax is only one one woman, but she can't fight off 20, 29 women by herself. Those are, all those women will overpower her and throw her out. Now, if she gets thrown out, that will be the best thing to ever happen 
in in a WWE match in 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 the Royal Rumble. If Nia Jax is the first person to get, that gets thrown out before she even gets a chance, you know, it's, it it will be great. That will be wonderful. Um, and then you can see Nia Jax feuding with all the other women, twenty nine other women in the in the WWE. Um, that would be a really good storyline. I'd like to see. Um, so there's there's you know Rhea Ripley uh, getting cheered is an interesting concept because you know she's everyone really going out. Everyone hates Nia Jax. That's the only reason why she gets cheered. And you know people are saying, oh, she's going to be a face sometime. No, she's just getting cheered because no one likes Nia Jax and. Right after she takes yeah. care of Nia Jax, everyone's going to boo Rhea Ripley after. But... I, got, I, got, I got a question for you. I got a question for you. Who do you think is the worst, is, is hated more, Nia Jax or Chelsea Wing? Because that's, 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 that's probably a discussion for another, probably another video. Nia, probably, Nia, probably Nia Jax, in my own opinion. Yeah, I'd probably say Nia Jax is probably not like more. And so, the thing is, so the interesting thing is, like, my prediction's off, so I'm interested in how this Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax feud is going to be, because rumors said that, it's, I want to see, people have rumors that they're going to save Rhea Ripley versus Becky Lynch at WrestleMania, but I always thought that maybe Rhea Ripley was going to defend the title against Nia Jax at Royal Rumble, so because Nia Jax is entering the Royal Rumble, I highly doubt she's going to face Rhea Ripley and then enter the Royal Rumble, but we've seen wrestlers compete in a championship match at the Royal Rumble and then be the surprise entrant at the Royal Rumble. So I can probably see Nia Jax pulling that. Like Nia Jax pulling um, Nia Jax facing Rhea Ripley at Royal Rumble. She has a devastating loss to Rhea Ripley and then she becomes like a 30 or a 29 woman entrance. So you all know Brock Lesnar did that a couple years ago. Um, he lost the WB Championship thanks to Paul Heyman. Would you know he was the surprise entrance that same night in the Royal Rumble? Yeah, maybe, maybe that might be. Um, uh, Nia Jax will have to deal with damage control. You know, you we know damage control has their own little thing that they're going to try to do, and um, I, it, it's it's. It's, it's kind of an interesting you angle. Have, but you also have the think, you have think also have, have the um potential of, references around. You also have the potential. You have if Nia Jax loses the Royal Rumble, and if they have like no match between Rhea Ripley and Nia Jax the Royal Rumble, they might be they might do oh, um, Nia Jax loses the Royal Rumble and then they'll still do the match anyway that Elimination Chamber, but. Question is, I wonder how many championships are going to be defended inside that structure at Elimination Chamber. So there's a lot of, you know, but I don't want to talk too much. Um, moving on. Yes, we're finally to this match. Yes, thank God they retained. Um, Canton Card, um, Can a Chance and Kaden Carter defending the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship against Chelsea Green and Pipper Nivens. <laughs> um... But, oh my god, what a match. I swear to god, if Triple H gave them back to... I swear to god, if Triple H um, took the titles back off them and gave them back to Chelsea Green and Pippen and Evans, oh, I'll be ranting. Um, oh my god. Um, plus, <laughs> plus I'll, I love this match. I love seeing Chelsea Green getting her ass kicked, especially what a dumbass by Pimper Nivens she is. Like... Oh my god, I, that was a complete dumbass move by Pimper Nivens. Like, she was about to um do that full Bobby, uh, she was trying to do that whole body, um, the rock, the big rock bottom move that she does off the top rope, but, um, it was supposed to be on one, I don't remember if it was Chance or Carter, but, um, one of them saved the other and then put Chelsea Green, <laughs> put Chelsea Green on there to stand, Pimper Nivens didn't see her, she was face. She was looking down too. Like, how do you not know that's your partner? Like, why? <laughs> and, and then Pipper Niven hit the rock button on Chelsea Green, and Chelsea Green was like, oh, I, I can't. They're just a bunch of dumbasses. And what do you know? Um, um, the other team, Caden Carter and Cannon Chance, took advantage and was able to hit the after party on Chelsea Green. Thank God it was Chelsea Green again. Yay. Um, how did that feel? Um, it was the, basically a move that. They put each other on, on each other's shoulders, <laughs> and then, pew, like, how did that feel, bitch? Like, holy moly, yeah, take it. And then, Cannon Chance and Cannon Carter wins by pitfall. Let's go. <laughs> what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, like I, no, said, I, I hate I, Chelsea I really, Green. Sorry, you Chelsea Green fans. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, what she, I, that's what she needed, a power bomb. <laughs> that's what Chelsea Green needed, a beat down by her own partner. But it was accidental, but it was funny. <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> I'm not gonna. I'm gonna keep it short. Yeah, I agree with you. It's 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 good that that can um, um, Chance and Carter won. I really like Chance and Carter. They're a really good tag team. They they know their stuff. They're really they're a really dangerous tag team for 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 Pimpin Nibbles and Chelsea Green. They to you know they all they do is just use brute force. They just they don't have strategy. But Chance and Carter use strategy. They know how to. They they figure them out. So they they know how to beat them, and they use their own thing against them. That's how they won, basically. So look, look, that's, look, that's, look, that's, look, that's look, what happened. Look, look, look. I knew, <laughs> I knew from the dot that Chance and Chance and Kaden Carter was going to retain. Like, come on, they just won the titles. Um, sorry to interrupt, but sorry to say this, but Logan Paul is beating. Kevin Owens. That's the same scenario. He just won the title. <laughs> Kenneth Chance, they just won the title. So they're not going to lose that quick. <laughs> Obviously, I know you're going to cheer for Kevin Owens, but think about it. I know you're going to hate it, but he just won the title. There's no way he's going to lose it that quick. Like, Logan Paul's oh, going oh, oh, to hold on to the title until WrestleMania. That's what I'm saying. He Logan might, Paul's going to get he help. Logan that. Paul's going to get help by, he by with um Grayson Waller and um Austin Theory. They're going to get involved I, and cause Kevin Owens to. <laughs> I, I believe I believe he's going to lose it that quick. He's going to lose it. There's that no quick. way. He just won the title quick. They're not going to. The gonna... right hand, <laughs> the right hand of, of Kevin Owens can strike Logan Paul's face just like look like Logan Paul. It's because look, look, Kevin Owens is, is a heavy hitter, and just like Logan Paul, if if they both throw their right hands and and it connects with that person's jaw or their chin, it's good night, bye bye, good night. Just like how the Big Show throws his right hands and then he knocks people out out cold. It's the same this, thing. This guy, this guy's same gonna, thing. this guy's gonna rant if Kevin Owens loses to Logan Paul. He's gonna flip okay. cars. He's gonna throw like smoke bombs at the police. That's what he's gonna do. <laughs> Oh, oh, okay. you, oh, I won't be throwing any smoke around that the police. But you're gonna be, you're gonna be best believe I'm gonna be ranting about Logan Paul. Okay, Logan Paul is no true champion, as, as you've seen in my the, the shirt that I made for Logan Paul. That's Logan Paul's birthday present right there, baby. That's Logan Paul's birthday. By the way, I tagged that picture to. Oh, you can fix that to the bank. Um, by the way, I tagged that picture to Samantha Irvin and Ricochet, but they never replied, so that's a shame. That'd be funny if they actually saw it. <laughs> I hope they see it. Uh, but moving on to the next um, match, we got JD McDonough versus The Miz. Um, um, obviously, um, The Miz being hated so many times, I guess The Miz is officially a face. Um, obviously, I think The Miz turned face like a couple weeks ago after he... Oh yeah, when he feuded with Gunther. Um but mm -hmm. but um yeah, um it was R Truth that was in this match, um what team um watching Mrs. Back and it was uh Dominic Mysterio watching D J McDonough's um J D McDonough's back. Um it went back and forth and you know, obviously R Truth he's probably gonna be cheering for J D McDonough because like I am in the judgment day. But um Obviously, um, the Miz was able to hit the skull crushing finale on J. Name McDonough. I think because Art Fruits got involved, I can't remember. Um, but I know like Judgment Day was complaining after, and basically, yeah, I think that's basically what happened. But the Miz gets the win over J. D. McDonough thanks to Art Fruits, I guess. I don't really know exactly if he um interfered, but maybe he not. Maybe he did. Judgment Day was complaining about him, um, but. We have to see what happens, but um, what are your thoughts in this match? I don't, I don't know which side, which side our truth is on. Is our truth on the Judgment Day side, or is he, or, or is he doing his own thing? Is he with the Miz? Like it's 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 just a weird. This guy is just playing both sides like it's nothing. You know, he's being the comedy, the comedy, the comedian that he is, the jokester that he is, but he's playing both sides. 
I think he is the true leader of the Judgment Day right here. He's going to make himself the true leader of the Judgment Day. You know, I don't know, man. It's just little. It's it's funny. He's he's a funny guy. I like him. Um, but you just have to see how things. I like I like to see how things progress with him and the Judgment Day. All right. So moving on, we got Seth Rollins um, making an entrance, and basically he wants to talk about. Um, he talks about WrestleMania. Obviously, um, Royal Rumble's coming up, and we have to see who will win on the men's side. My money's on CM Punk, um, but we have to see who wins the men's Royal Rumble. He said that he actually never taken a world title into WrestleMania, so he wants to be a fighting champion. And he's like, "Who's who? He's going to be at WrestleMania?" And then he gets interrupted. You all know, Jinder McCall. With T, that's the returning WWE champion last week, but it ended up being The Rock. And here he, he here he um, is again interrupting Seth Rollins. And I'm like, damn, this guy is interrupting a lot of people. And um, there's actually a lot of history between Jinder McCall and Seth Rollins. They faced off against each other for the NXT Championship at one point. Um, in the tag team match, um, they faced off. So a lot of history between J- Jinder McCall and... And um, Seth Rollins, and obviously, um, you know, Jinder Mahal talking shit, talking some trash, Seth Rollins talking shit, and Seth Rollins wants to, um, Jinder Mahal to um, take a swing, but refuses, but knowing that people just cheap shots people, when Seth Rollins um, walks away, Jinder Mahal cheap shots him from behind, it seems like Jinder Mahal got him, like, attacks him, but what do you know, um, Rollins ducks, and then, um, Tries to go through the um go, tries to go through the stomp, but um, Jinder Mahal f- runs away. Like um yeah, and then basically, that's just that. Um, so you actually got a huge championship match next week. To my surprise, they're actually putting Jinder Mahal versus Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship next week. So that's gonna be a banger. Um, so what are your thoughts on this whole Seth Rollins and Jinder Mahal segment? I mean, every now and then I see Jinder Mahal in the WWE. Um, I don't really see him beating. He's not going to beat Seth Rollins for the WWE for the World Heavyweight Championship. Um, the, uh, Binder, Jinder can feud. He he has a lot of people to feud with. So now he's feuding with Seth, and he needs to. He needs to be. He needs to be uh, working his way back into the role, the roles and stuff. So it's going to be inter- interesting to see how he takes him, how he takes, uh, how far he goes. All right, moving on to the next match, we got Ivar versus Otis. But um, <laughs> um, this was a okay for match. It's just my. My boy Otis, man, why is Triple H doing him dirty? He needs to win matches. Like, he keeps losing matches. It's so sad. Um, but it's Ivar is no joke. Ivar is one half of Viking Raiders. And, man, he's just huge. We talked about his weight at one point. Um, but Ivar is no joke, um, obviously. I think the guy is, like, 300-something pounds. Um, if you guys don't know, his partner um, got hurt. Um, I can't remember his name. It's... Uh, Ivar and um, I can't remember, but he got hurt. He required surgery, so he's been out for a while. Um, so he's been soling. Well, he had uh, the one chick with him. Um, just an absolute psychopath. Looked like Viking girl. Um, but um, yeah, Ivar wins with the Moonsaw, and Ivar is just too strong for Otis. Um, Otis is kind of huge, you know. This is what Otis looked like. He's huge, you know. <laughs> I have to show you on my shirt. It's weird. Um, but Ivor is no joke. Um, Ivor defeats Otis with a moonsault. What are your thoughts on this match? Mm. Ivor defeats Otis with a moonsault. <laughs> wow, you got these big guys doing all kinds of Olymp- uh, uh, jumps and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, this is good that Ivor is getting his wins, but Otis definitely needs to get his wins. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity there for a a new rival. Um, so I have to see how things go uh, with this with these, with these continuous bookings. Um, 
and and where is it where is it taking Alpha Academy? Um, where is it also taking the uh, the Viking Raiders? Because the Viking Raiders could be a really good heel. They could be a really good heel faction, but right now they're not hundred percent. So uh, maybe in the future we might see more of them. And so. the thing with the Viking Raiders, uh, excuse me. Think about the Viking Raiders. They're a great tag team. It's just one of their guys are, is hurt. Um, oh yeah, I remember the other guy's name. Is his name's Eric? Eric and Ivar. Um, Eric is the one that's married to the chick that always with them. Um, but <laughs> um, they could. They I definitely could see them as um, contenders to the undisputed tag team titles. But people are saying that they need to split the titles soon. I feel like that's gonna be done later on. Um, they probably might be doing that if like. If Damon Priest does leave the Judgment Day, I think at that point they're probably going to split the tag team titles. Um, but we have to see what happens. Um, but um, moving on to the main event, we got Cody Rhodes, American Nightmare versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Obviously, this feud isn't over. I think this is um, the I think this is their final feud. So it turns out this was supposed to be a regular match, but um, Adam Pearce made it a street fight. So let's go. Cody Rhodes and Shinsuke Nakamura in a street fight. Um, this was a great match. I loved it. Um, obviously, there were some close calls. I actually thought Shinsuke Nakamura was going to take out Cody Rhodes. But you all know Cody Rhodes were gonna, was going to come through. Um, I believe Cody Rhodes went through a table. Yeah, Cody Rhodes went through a table. And Shinsuke Nakamura only had almost had the 1-2-3 count. And then to end the match, Shinsuke Nakamura was able to... Uh, Cody Rhodes was able to hit a pedigree. It wasn't enough, and then basically um, hit the Cody Cutter, and basically um, that wasn't enough. So basically, Shinsuke Nakamura f went through a table and then hit another Cody Cutter. Um, I don't remember if he did do two Cutter to Cutters. I think it was a. Oh yeah, he put Shinsuke Nakamura through the table and then a Cody Cutter, and. Um, Basically, that's it. Cody Rhodes wins, defeats Shinsuke Nakamura in a street fight with the Crossroads. Um, um, so, what are your thoughts on this um, street fight main event? You know, I thought Shinsuke would get a win over Cody um, in a clean fight. However, um, I think Co Cody was really exhausted by the end of it. He took it. It took. It took everything out of him to make sure that. He could get the the win over Shinsuke, um, but it may have been good to see it number four uh, matchup uh, against Cody and Shinsuke. But uh, you know that's the way things are. Sometimes you can't win every battle that you that you are in. So Shinsuke had to do what he had to do, you know. But uh, Cody Cody was just too much for him. Poor, poor Shinsuke Nakamura. Um, I don't think he's been winning a lot of matches. Well, he beat the entire Alpha Academy, but still, this guy can't catch a break. Drew McIntyre can't catch a break. Um, funny, f fun fact is that he actually he lost like eight championship matches in a row. Poor guy. I, I understand Drew McIntyre's um, frustration, but I'm not going to talk too much. That would do it for this show. Um, pretty good show. Um. In terms of grading, I'll give it a um, plain A. I give it an A. Um, what about you? I will give it a an A too because it was really well done and everything went well. All right, so that will do it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. That's our broadcast for the Monday Night Raw that took place um, this earlier this Monday. And um, yeah, if you guys haven't done so, hit that like button, hit that subscribe. You also see um, this man's YouTube channel, Kenny Yorker, in the description of this video if you want to check him out. Um, be safe, guys. Hope you guys enjoy your um, day, your evening, whatever. Um, it's it's been um, a long, long night for both of us a little bit, but um, we'll be back for our broadcast for Friday Night SmackDown. Um, so yeah, take it easy guys. I hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday evening and yeah, take it easy. Any last, um, sick, sick and sauce? No, uh, no, just you guys have a great and the weekend. All right. Take it easy guys. See you guys next time.